welcome back to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Jonathan Frank. And I'm Shan Stout. Shan, we are talking with two all-star Tennessee Tech alums today. That's right. Now, we're talking to Dontrell Baines, the chair of the Tennessee Tech Alumni Board. He's also a former Golden Eagle football player and now a very successful businessman in Atlanta. I can't wait for our listeners to hear his story. Yeah, Dontrell is somebody who has really become a good friend. It was fascinating to hear him talk in this conversation about coming to Cookville all the way from his upbringing in Dover, Delaware. He was really a long way from home, but as he shares, the Tennessee Tech campus and the Cookville community uh, really made him feel at home right away. Uh, and, you know, he's also somebody that even though he lives now in Atlanta, Georgia, he's back up here in Cookville uh, quite often. In fact, I was just talking with Charia Campbell. And uh, as we are recording this conversation, he's back up here uh, on campus this week for an event that he's doing with Intercultural Affairs. So uh, we're excited for people to hear what he has to say. He's somebody that really does have a passion for the purple and gold. And speaking of someone who's dedicated to purple and gold, we also got to speak with the lovely Kirsten Cooper. She is a tech alum who recently opened the French Cookie on Cookville's West Side. Now, for our listeners who haven't been there, you have got to stop by for a French macaron and also see the beautiful inviting space that Kirsten has created. Uh, it is it is such a great addition to the West Side. I went the other evening with my family and we all loved it, but you really lucked out, Shan, because uh, the Visitors Bureau is like, what, practically next door to them. Well, it's a little dangerous, Jonathan, to have someone who makes the most delicious macarons you've ever eaten be two doors down from you but it is just the short straw that I drew. Well, let's go ahead and roll the tape on these interviews because I'm suddenly very hungry. Uh, up first, it is our conversation with Tennessee Tech alumna and the owner of the French cookie, Kirsten Cooper. Welcome back to College Town Talk, or as they say in France, bienvenue à la discussion sur la ville universitaire. That's Southern French. Okay, that wasn't my best attempt at the French language. Uh, I can I can see that Kirsten is going to be laughing at me in a minute. But our next guest makes a delicious French dessert, multiple kinds of things actually. And today we're talking to Tennessee Tech alumni and Cookville's very own macaron maven, Kirsten Cooper, and she of course is the owner of the French Cookie on Cookville's West Side. Now, the French cookie just opened earlier this year, but it has already become a local favorite and a personal favorite of mine for their delectable French macarons in a variety of so many irresistible flavors, along with specialty items like tarts. And I love the French sodas. Uh, if you haven't had the mixed berry, I highly recommend it. Five stars all around. And Kirsten and her husband, Austin live here in the community with their daughter, Kendall, and then you have another little one, right, Kirsten? Yes, his name is Liam. He is 10, 10 months old. He'll be one on December 8th. So, Well, we are so happy to have you here. Welcome to College Town Talk. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, Kirsten, we're so happy to have you here. Uh, I wanted to start by asking you how this all began. I read an interview where you said you were working at an architecture firm and started baking on nights and weekends for fun. Uh, did, you, did you ever think it would turn into this? Yeah, so I definitely did not. Um, it's kind of funny. So if you were to ask my teammates in college, well, you know, okay, so I played volleyball at Tech. Um, I would, we always had extra bananas in the um, locker room. And so I would always bring, bring them home because it killed me to throw them away. And I would make banana bread. And so definitely the volleyball team knew I had a passion for baking. But even just growing up, I loved my easy bake oven. I mean, we all loved our easy bake ovens. And so I always had loved to bake, um, but yeah, so I graduated from tech in 2018, no, 19, man, 2019. Um, I was like, when did I get married? Because I got married in college, but so I graduated from tech in 2019, and then yes, I worked for an architecture firm for about two years. Um, I had an internship there while I was at tech. My major was um, human ecology with a minor, well, minor in business, but a concentration in housing and design. And so 
I always loved to bake and I would bake on the side while working um, full time. And then when we had our daughter in 2020, I decided I would go full time. So I started baking macarons actually um, after learning how to make them on YouTube. So, um, so my, I have endometriosis. And so my husband and I were trying to have our daughter and we had a hard time. And so I had surgery and while I was recovering, I had, um, I had a lot of time to spare and I YouTube, YouTubed macaron videos. And so that's how the whole thing got started. And, um, I kind of became a little obsessive, you know, as an athlete, you're used to doing something 24 seven. And so once I graduated, yeah, I was working, but I needed something else to do. And so I just started, I kind of became obsessed with them and they're a challenge. And I had a billion batches that I would throw away and that would make me mad. So I had to keep making a billion more and it just, um, flourished. And then we said, okay, after we had our daughter, we, I was going to do it full time and it just worked out well. And so we decided we would buy, we actually bought, bought another house and converted the garage into a commercial kitchen. And so we, it was a licensed commercial kitchen through the health department and we worked at it for a year and a half. And then right before we had my son in December of last year, we're like, you know what, let's just build a storefront. So here we are. <laughs> now, Kirsten, I'm, I have followed your journey. I mean, I, I also followed your macaron truck when you were a food truck. <laughs> yes. And I, I, anywhere you were, it was like, okay, I have to have uh, half a dozen or oftentimes a dozen macarons. But I know personally, because I have seen epic fails in the macaron business, it is a delicate little cookie. It is yes. not an easy thing. You can't just look up a recipe and do it. It is, I mean, and you make hundreds and hundreds of macarons. So that process to me is amazing that they're so consistent and you have staff that helps you as well. So how, how do you keep that consistency going? So I will say, I mean, there are days where the humidity is high and it seems like nothing's going right. And I'm like, wait, why did I do this again? But 90% of the time, everything works out great. And it's just, once you get your recipe down and cause you weigh everything in grams. So it's a very specific um, item, the shells are. And so once you get everything down and you learn your techniques, it's, yeah, it, recipe is 100% important, but it's all about technique and doing it the same way every single time. And you can do it the same way every single time and you might still mess up. And so it has taught me a lot of patience and <laughs> for sure. And especially when we're making so many, I mean, we will make, I don't know, last week we made 3000 like, and so some weeks are, we make more because we had that big pumpkin painting thing up in the event space upstairs which that was so, so much fun. Um, but, and we have a big event this weekend. And so we'll make another 3000 this weekend or for this weekend. And wow. um, it just takes one, a lot of patience two, giving yourself grace, honestly, because there's going to be days that don't, they don't work out at all. And you can't let it, um, you can't let it bring you down because you just know, well, tomorrow you'll start new. It's just a lot of life. Macarons have give you a lot of life lessons for sure. Um, well, I, I'll tell you, this is this is something, you know, that the sports analogy to macarons is really a, an interesting segue over uh, because, you know, you, you have to be very dedicated and, and have yeah. a lot of uh, self-confidence even and a lot of self-discipline to be able to to be good at sports and the same thing apparently is uh, for macarons but you made a decision early on in the life of your business to be a generous supporter of Tennessee Tech and the community you're a partner sponsor for Tech Athletics which is a great match for you so great and you have done fundraising partnerships for the Upperman High School marching band helping get them new uniforms the Tennessee Tech chapter of Best Buddies, which of course is all about friendship and connection for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And that only scratches the surface of your community involvement. And even the fact that you have lined your store recently with pumpkins to be able to have children be able to, to paint pumpkins in your space and experience the magic of your store. Because every time I have one of my nieces, my nephews, my sons come to visit my office, the first thing they want to do is walk down to French Cookie 
and pick out macarons. It is it is truly such a great space. And, you know, why has that giving back piece been so important to you? So we, well, to, to the tech, obviously, you know, Coop, my husband and I were alumni and we just felt like I loved, loved playing volleyball tech, but I felt like the community, and it has nothing to do with it. just girls athletic, that there's not always the support there that they deserve. Um, I mean, we worked our butts off and I mean, college athletics is hard being a full-time student's hard. And so we just really, um, like, I, I guess we support the athletics program, how I would have loved to have been supported, you know? And so that's, um, that's just one reason why, and we also do for girls basketball as well. Um, and so my husband's a huge basketball fan. I like basketball, but obviously volleyball's, volleyball's my thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we do that with tech and then also just the community. We, I mean, I was a home baker for what, three years, something like that. And so the only reason why this business is where it is, is because of our community. And so it just, I don't know, we just want to love on the community because one, only reason we're here. And two, we just believe that God has allowed us to have this platform. And so we just really want to use that well and just love on other families and we're just a really big um, family oriented business. I mean, we have our kids at the store. We, I love, uh, just love seeing my kids grow up. I took a video this morning of my son crawling around the, like behind the counter. It's just, I don't know. I just love it. And we just incorporate our family into every aspect of our lives. And so we just want that for our community too, is to see the families in the community thrive and also somehow finding a way to support them in their, I guess, their um, development of their families. All right. We have got to read off some of the many flavors you've had in the store recently. We're talking apple pie, salted caramel pretzel, pumpkin spice latte, red velvet, blueberry cheesecake, pistachio, white chocolate raspberry, honey lavender, cookie dough, uh, th that's not even a full list, but I'll, I'll stop there because I'm I'm getting hungry. Uh, <laughs> now, Jonathan, I just want to tell you, we should have turned this into a macaron game. I needed a little bail because every flavor you named off is like ding, 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 <laughs> because Shan has had that flavor. So they're all so great. I don't even know which one to recommend as my favorite, but carry on. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we should have done this interview while eating macarons actually that would have made, that would have made it better but uh, my question is Kirsten how do you come up with these flavors and what are the best sellers right now so my best seller and my personal favorite as of last week is our snickers one and so um the way we come up with flavors one I'm a sweets I love sweets more than anything if I if I'm gonna snack on something it's gonna be something sweet my husband is salsa and chips and I'm like cookies and ice cream, cake, chocolate cake, long story short, but I love sweets. And so I just try and think of ways I can incorporate flavors into the cookie. And so, so the shells, for example, those are not usually flavored. So 99% of the time, they're just almond flour, powdered sugar, egg whites, blah, 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 blah. We don't add any flavoring to the shells. And so the thing about macarons is they get their flavoring from the center and you have to let macarons mature for 24 hours and the shells absorb the flavor of the fillings. So fun fact. But, um, and then we just, the recipes and flavors. So for example, a Reese's macaron, it's peanut butter, buttercream with chocolate ganache in the middle. And so there's just a lot of, different elements of a flavor that I just kind of mix and combine into things, if that makes sense. So um, like our Snickers one, we just put peanuts in the ganache and then did a homemade nougat and then added caramel. And when you add all those ingredients or elements together, it make it tastes like Snickers. And so that's kind of how we come up with um, our flavors is just different elements of things and how to make them work for one macaron because if it's too soggy then like a strawberry jam you can't usually put it in a shell because it'll make the shell soggy and so um, knowing how macarons mature best and work and then also how to get the flavors right is it's like a fun experiment and it's a challenge it's another it's another thing that's about macarons that's a challenge so that's how that's how we come up with our flavors 
So it's like a cookie science lab is what you're telling yes. me. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I have a notebook at the store right now because I've been trying different element, like try tweaking some things. And I have like a 10, like different batches. I write down, okay, they baked best at 290 for five minutes. And then the next one I'll do like 290 for six minutes, just, and then documenting what the shells looked like it's it's pretty wild it's literally a, I mean baking is science Kirsten you've made such a mark in Cookville over the years all the time that you've been here people think of you as a local but I, I was very surprised to know that you are originally from St. Louis and you came here on a volleyball scholarship now what was it about Cookville that made you say I think I'm going to stick around. So my husband and I got married in college and we have, we just developed some great roots here in Cookville. You know, obviously the athletics program and all, we've had a lot of memories. Like we'll walk around the plaza, even now with the kids all the time, we'll walk from our store down to the plaza and everything. And we just love how wholesome it feels here. And it's just Cookville is the perfect place to raise a family. I mean, Dogwood Park, all the local events, all the, I mean, the the schools are great. I mean, there's just so many aspects of Cookville that's, I mean, really, I don't know of another town that would be better. So we just, I don't know, we just love it. It's also semi-close to um, my husband's family. His family lives in Dunlap, and so it's about an hour. Um, my family is still in Missouri, Missouri, and then also my mom lives in Texas. And so I'm a little spread out from my family, which is, I mean, you know, I miss my family, but it is what it is. And then um, I had a job here at the architecture firm. And then obviously now I have the business here. And so we definitely don't plan on leaving. Um, Lord willing, never because we love Cookville. But um, yeah, we love it. It's just a great place to raise a family and it's just wholesome and just good people. Finally, Kirsten, we like to end each interview the same way. And that is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? I think the roots and the foundation that Tech has brought me has been, I mean, on, honestly, life-changing. I mean, I the connections to start a business and the education I received at Tech was, I mean, my minor was in business and, you know, here we are. <laughs> and, um, and so just the education and connections and community, it's just, it's perfect. Um, and the small town feel, but also has a lot of resources that doesn't, isn't like limiting for sure. Um, and so tech is just, and then obviously with the athletic program, we love the athletics. And so it's just, I would say the connections that I have developed from tech has been awesome and just friends that go there. And then I still have tons of college friends that I see and teammates. And I feel like a lot of um, college students are staying too. I've noticed a lot of my friends from college, yeah, a lot of them will move to Knoxville or other areas, but I've had a lot stay here as well. And so I feel like tech, um, Cookville is growing and so there's more jobs and then so tech students are able to stay. Well, I, I think that's exactly right, Kirsten. And, and that you know resonates with me as a tech alum that's come back here now to live and work at the university. And of course, it really helps persuade people to make their home in Cookville when there are great places like the French cookie to get dessert. So Kirsten, thank you for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Thank you so much for having me. And for our listeners, be sure to visit the French cookie in person at 120 West Broad Street here in downtown Cookville or find them online at frenchcookieckvl.com. Welcome back to College Town Talk. We are now joined by the chair of the Tennessee Tech Alumni Association's Board of Directors, Dontrell Baines. A native of Dover, Delaware, Dontrell came to Tennessee's college town back in 2005 on a full-ride scholarship when he was just 17 years old. As a Tech student, he played for the Golden Eagle football team and made a home in Tech's College of Business, graduating with his degree in accounting in 2009. Beyond his service to the Alumni Association, Dontrell serves as an advisor for Tech's Chi Lambda chapter of Omega Sci Fi Fraternity, a historically African American fraternity that he joined as a Tech student. He's also chair of the university's Intercultural Affairs Alumni Advisory Council. 
When he's not volunteering his service to tech, Dontrell works as a business transformation manager at Capgemini, a global consulting company. He and his wife, Christine, live in Atlanta, Georgia with their young children, Dallas and Dakota. Dontrell, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you very much for having me on the platform. I'm very excited to be on here. Now, Dontrell, you're a really busy guy. You've got an important career, a young family, and a lot of demands on your time, but you choose to remain so closely involved here at Tennessee Tech throughout your service on the alumni board. Uh, you also are involved in the Intercultural Affairs Alumni Advisory Council and other projects. What made you want to stay connected to campus all these years after graduating? Well, as Jonathan said earlier, I was 17 years old. Um, entering a new city, trying to find uh, what I wanted to be and who I wanted to be. Um, Tennessee Tech and Cookville really embraced me and allowed me to have them, them as a second home, a secondary home. Um, I fell in love with accounting as well as pushing my football career and uh, really enjoying the people that I met along the way. Um, I, I noticed while I was at Tennessee Tech that the university wasn't perfect. There's no university that is perfect, but I wanted to give back as soon as I had the opportunity to um, and as soon as the opportunity presented itself. So as soon as I was able to get grounded in my career and pretty much uh, know that I was set on success, um, I made a, v a beeline right back to Tennessee Tech to make sure that I was able to give back and to uh, be able to be that person that I wanted when I was at university. and. Uh, just be able to help out in any capacity that I could with my experience, with my education, and um, with with my know-how. Well, Dontrell, I, I want to say it's been so great serving with you and, and getting to know you on the alumni board, uh, or I guess formerly the Alumni Association Board of Directors. Um, we, we've gotten to know each other over the last couple of years in that capacity. And you were obviously chosen to lead the board because you are the best person for the role, no question about that. But you also happen to be the first person of color to lead the Alumni Association Board of Directors, and it's more than 100 years year history. And, you know, your role on the board is coming at a time when tech is making some important strides around diversity. Uh, for one, thanks to the involvement of people like you, the university just completed a major renovation of its Black Cultural Center and uh, grew diversity on campus with the new freshman class, the class of 2027. So uh, from where you sit, what does this all mean to you? And what's your assessment of the direction that tech is, is, is moving in? First of all, I would like to say thank you for saying that, John as well as I am extremely proud uh, to be the first African-American member, well, African-American chair of the um, Alumni Association Board of Directors. Um, I feel as though this is just the beginning. Um, I know that um, I've seen great changes even since the few years that I have been on the board, and I see that the university is really pushing towards more diversity, towards more inclusion, towards more um, equality for everyone, um, whether it be gender, race, or sexuality, which is amazing uh, to see. Um, as far as the the BCC, which is the Black Cultural Center, I'm extremely proud of the renovations behind that as well. Um, just seeing that there is, a, this is a further shows that there is a place on the university and the university is aware that there are needs for minorities to um, have a place to call home or a place to feel comfortable and they currently, they have that on campus, as well as Tech is continuously working to uh, promote diversity. So I see that and I'm a huge advocate in that as well. Uh, I'm also excited to see uh, what's happening with the future, just because of the fact that I've seen the machine that Tech has built and the place that and the benefits that the university is going to continue to go in the future. So I'm excited about that. And I know that we're going to continue to push that forward and uh, make sure that everyone feels that this Tennessee Tech is a place to be and a place that they want their future children to go and uh, continue to build that going forward. Now, speaking of going forward, on this podcast, we love to talk about the many people and places that make Cookville special. You had a unique experience coming here all the way from Delaware. So what did you do? How did you settle into Cookville? And what are some of your memories of the local community that um, 
impacted you? So yes, I am originally from Dover, Delaware. And my story is a bit interesting just because of the fact that um, it didn't start off a great story. Um, I was in Dover, Delaware with my family until um, unfortunately my mother passed away of cancer when I was in middle school. Um, I relocated to Georgia and uh, continued to play sports and play football and go to school. Um, my high school coaches were two tech alumni, uh, Billy Shackelford and Zach Reed, who both played football for University of Tennessee Tech. And they were uh, pretty much the driving forces to um, get me to come to Tennessee Tech. As a matter of fact, my coach, Zach Reed, is the one who drove me to my recruit trip to Tennessee Tech and talked about the Golden Eagles for a three and a half hour drive there and back. And um, he's pretty much the reason why, uh, one of the reasons why I am at uh, I came to Tennessee Tech and I'm extremely happy for um, having him in my life because he's an amazing human being. I know him and his his sister and fam all of his family. So extremely proud of that. And they all came from the same county that I currently, well, I lived in when I was in high school. So they were the ones who brought me to Tennessee Tech. Um, so that your coach yeah. drove your destiny. I love that. I love that you had a mentor and someone that could, you know, kind of push you in the right direction and, and see something in you that was going to work out for your future. That's, that's great. Yes. I, I love that about that. And, you know, he also, they, when they come into town, you know, when I was there, I would see them, we'd go to football games. And actually one of my um, assistant principals at my high school, she's actually a tech alum as well, as well. So, um, it was it was a big family that was the reason why I came to Tennessee Tech. Now, once I went to Tennessee Tech, uh, the places my my watering holes, as you could say, or the places that I love to go to were uh, the the Zaxby's or the Longhorn on Jefferson, or even um, just being able to go to the um, El Tapatio. That's one of the places that I have to go every time I'm in town. And this is the one on Willow. That's the, the you have to know which one to differentiate. So uh, the El Tap on, on Willow is definitely where I would go or even the T-Mart. That's something that, you know, a uh, late night food to be able to get while you're studying. Um, so those were the places that I went. And I actually even had friends that were in um, Monterey. So I would, you know, go down the highway a little bit to go to Monterey and hang out there. So um, those were the places that I went to while I was in Cookville that I say, this is my home, you know, my home away from home. I love it. Well, Dontrell, I'm I'm laughing to myself because I know exactly what you mean about the El Tapatio location on Willow Avenue being kind of the preferred location of tech students. I, I remember it was that way when when I was at tech and I, I don't I don't know what it was, but that was the location that we went to. Although I, I should report for the record that I've been to the one on Jefferson and the chicken rice and cheese is is just as good there. But uh, let's let's move to a different topic. You weren't just a standout student here at Tech. You were also an athlete and played for the football team all four years you were enrolled. And Tech recently announced that they will be completely rebuilding the west side of Tucker Stadium and constructing a dedicated football operations center. So how big of a deal is that to student athletes and Tech football fans? I think that that is amazing. And as a, as a football alumni, I'm thrilled about the new operations center. I feel that the upgrade will bring better recruits to campus as well as entice alum to come back and take a look at the changes taking place at the university. Um, some of my old teammates have discussed getting season tickets um, once the construction is complete. Um, there will be a renewed energy in the stadium as well as you know, additional executive suites that I'm looking forward to as well as uh, the chair backs in the stadium. So we can pretty much get with the times and not have to worry about the cement blocks. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited about that, as well as uh, just the new locker rooms and the new look, the overall look of the stadium. I, I love our stadium we have now, but I know that um, new and nice and shiny always brings more people to want to come and take a look at. So excited about that and just know that knowing that that's going to be a change with the university and you know, help us grow. Now, finally, we like to end each interview with the same question. So if you're ready, here we go. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? That is a really, really awesome question. I'm glad that you asked that question. Uh, just because the fact that Tech has in, it's an in, in instilled family, basically a, a strong sense of family in my life. Um, I, as the second that I was that I received the scholarship to Tennessee Tech, 
I went on campus and I was met with open arms. I was met with smiling faces, people from all over the state, all over the country. Um, they pretty much brought me in. I can say a small story um, in September, which is when my birthday is. My freshman year, there was a group of freshmen who all got together and had a surprise birthday party for me. And I had been on campus roughly two or three weeks and had a room full of about 50 to 100 people that were all saying happy birthday to me. So from that day on, I kind of opened up and spread my wings just to try to say, okay, well, what can I, what can I do? What kind of people can I meet? What kind of person can I be? How can I grow in every aspect and every form? So that in itself has uh, changed me for the better as well as the small things that you do on campus. We had a, a dorm water balloon fights. We had uh, late night study sessions. We had a community service where we picked up trash and we spoke to kids at Avery Trace Middle School. Um, Cookville has definitely been a gem uh, for me in my life. And I hope that my kids become tech alumni as well. And, uh, when, and they make that decision when it's time for them. I love the fact that your memory back to how tech impacted you was the fact that you had been there a very short time and you you were wished a happy birthday by any time anyone goes to a place that is new and you're unsure and you don't know if you're going to be able to make friends to be welcomed in that way. Um, I just love everything about that. I think that speaks very well to the culture at tech. And I feel the same when I go there and I'm not sure of where I'm going or if I'm supposed to speak or meet someone new and everybody is so very kind. Don Trail, thank you so much for being our guest on College Town Talk today. Thank you very much. I want to thank Don Cheryl Baines and Kirsten Cooper for being our guests today. And if you're enjoying this podcast, please take a moment to subscribe, review, and share. Join us again next week for more conversations from right here in Cookville, Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.